was, well, it was shocking. There was no other word for it. It was tasteless. There was no, no spice to it. There was, there was no kind of flavour to it at all. Um, Hi, everyone. Really good to see you again. Really nice day here in London. It does make a change, doesn't it? Now, I've had quite a few suggestions on me going to Gordon Ramsay's restaurants and giving it a try. Now, I've never been to Gordon Ramsay's restaurant, ever. Never been there. So I was thinking, well, OK, yeah, what can I do to, to make it a little bit different? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Gordon Ramsay's for breakfast, I'm going to go there for lunch, and then I'm going to go there for dinner. And I'm going to go to three different restaurants as well. Really looking forward to this one. As always, let's give it a go. OK, so it's time for breakfast. Where are we? Oh, we're at Gordon Ramsay's Bar and Grill in Mayfair. A bit expensive, I think. Now, the interesting thing is, it's actually located in the Grosvenor Hotel. I'm looking here at the menu. It actually hasn't got breakfast on it. I hope I haven't made a big mistake here. OK, let's get in here and have a look. Okay, so we've come inside. As I said, outside. Uh, the restaurant itself is inside the hotel. The restaurant itself, wow, looks really, really nice. Um, very, very modern. Uh, as you'd expect, standards are impeccable. Okay, on to the menu. Now, they have their traditional breakfast here, um, pastries, classics, which is likes of fruit, fruit salad and what have you, coffees, teas, juices, and eggs. Now, normally I'd go for the sort of traditional breakfast um, and their full English breakfast here is £19 which has got everything on it. However, I've been to some of these very expensive places before and the portion size hasn't been that big. And also the fact that I've got to have three meals um, at Mr Ramsey's restaurant. So I'm going to go for the Regs Benedict, which is ham, two poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. Uh, I've ordered that with a cup of tea. Now, the Eggs Benedict itself is £12.75 and for my English tea, it's £4.50. So, I'll see you when your meal arrives, when my breakfast arrives. Okay, as you can see, my Eggs Benedict has arrived. So you, you have the two poached eggs there with the hollandaise sauce on top. Uh, some, looks like bacon, but it's, it's ham on a toasted muffin. And you can see the, the actual muffin itself is toasted there. Right, let's see how the poached eggs are, are cooked. Now, first things first, they're cooked with, to perfection. And what I do like is the colour of that yolk. That's a fantastic colour. Okay, let's tuck in. See what the egg tastes like. Yeah, that's really good. Now, let's try a little bit of the ham. See the ham there? Mm. The ham is excellent. It's got a nice little saltiness to it. It's not over, overbearing. It's very, very lean ham, as you can see. Oh, sorry. As you can see. Now, what I do like is the hollandaise sauce, which is basically um, egg yolks, butter, um, some lemon in there, a little bit of vinegar as well. With that um, hollandaise sauce, it's nice and creamy. A nice texture to it. You can taste the lemon there, and a bit of vinegar coming through as well. Really good hollandaise sauce. This is an excellent Eggs Benedict. Now, a big combo of everything. I'm savouring that. Pure quality in the eggs. The ham itself, as I said earlier on, that's excellent as well. 
of the creaminess of that hollandaise sauce complements everything brilliantly and the muffin underneath that's toasted perfectly fair play that is a very good breakfast okay i'm gonna tuck in and i'll see you guys shortly very impressed I do like a little bit of pepper on my eggs. A little bit carried away as usual. What I can't get over is the color of the yolk. It is a magnificent color, kind of a bright orange. They are really good eggs. Okay, so I finished my eggs, Benedict. I want to talk about this place first of all. It's got a lovely vibe to it. I'm really relaxed. It's not stuffy in any shape or form. It's just such a nice, relaxing feel. The music in the background is fantastic as well. Talk about fantastic. Probably the best toilets I've ever seen anywhere. I'll just turn up here just to wash my hands. Okay, so Eggs Benedict arrived. First things first, plate was nice and hot. So first impressions are excellent. Now I've already gone through everything. Cut into the egg. You saw the color of that yolk. Cooked fantastically well. Holiday sauce on top. It was rich, silky. It tasted fantastic. Really enjoyed the ham. And the, the muffin there, that was nicely toasted as well. As a combination, really went together fantastically well. Now, it was a little bit expensive, but every now and again, you've got to treat yourself. And the whole mix of the vibe here and the quality of the food, you know, I've got to say, was very nice. My cup of tea, yeah, nice cup of tea. That's the only bit there, £4.50, mm, a little bit expensive. Actually, very expensive. Talking of which, onto the bill. My cup of tea, or pot of tea, was £4.50. My eggs Benedict was 12 75 and that comes with a 15% service charge. 15%. Uh, total, just over £20. Now, would I come here again? That is the question. And the answer is definitely yes. As a special treat, you couldn't come here every single, well, I couldn't afford to come here every single day of the week. If I could afford to come here every day of the week, I actually probably would. Really enjoyed the atmosphere, the vibe here. Uh, the quality of the food was excellent. Really was good. What mark am I going to give it? I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. So if you're ever playing Monopoly and you land on Mayfair, come down here and give it a go. It is really worth it. As a treat, I think. As a real special treat. Okay. If the rest of the day goes as well as this, I'm going to be really, really happy. On to lunch. And I'm looking forward to this. Come on then. Okay, really enjoyed that breakfast. Now it's off to the O2 for a bit of lunch. Really hope this one is as good. Come on then. Okay, so we come inside the O2. I haven't been here for a while. Last time I was actually here was probably about 12 years ago and I saw Michael Bublé. That's probably the reason why I haven't been back here for 12 years. No, no, just kidding, just kidding. Where are we going? We're going to Street Burger by Gordon Ramsay. Now, obviously, it specialises in burgers. However, look at the menu there. It says Spice Spice Baby. It's all about their chicken wings. Have a look when I go in, decide what I'm going to have. As always, let's give it a go. Come on, then. Okay, so we've come to Street Burger. We were all going to sit inside, but the music was very, very loud in there, so we've come outside. Now, having a quick look at the menu, but as you'd expect, an excellent range of burgers. We've got some spicy wings there, hotter than hell. Uh, sides and sharers, some vegan bites and desserts. Now, for me, I'm going to go for their Hell's Kitchen, which is grass-fed Herefordshire, Herefordshire beef, and that comes with uh, lettuce, tomato, onion, gherkins, uh, street dressing, hotter than hell salsa, and hotter than hell relish, and also a bit of cheese. So I imagine this is going to be quite a warm uh, burger. Now, this comes with Kaufman fries, and the total price is £18. Now, to try and be a bit healthy as well today, I've got myself a Diet Coke. 
Okay, I'll see you when the meal arrives. Okay, so my burger's arrived. Uh, first impressions, it looks a little bit small. However, nice portion of uh, fries there, Hoffman fries. But one thing I've got to say is, normally you go into McDonald's there and you see in the picture of the, the burger up there and you're like, oh wow. And then suddenly it turns up and there's this tiny little squash thing. That doesn't look like that, does it? I know presentation wise, that's very nice. Let's open it up and take a quick look inside. So imagine that's the salsa there. We've got the, the cheese, the burger itself. Let's put that on there. Now I've got to say, that's, that looks like a picture within itself. That looks great. Plenty of lettuce there as well. A little bit further down. It's underneath there. Oh yeah, there's the relish. The very hot relish. Let's put it all back together again. Let's take a bite. Actually, I'm going to start with the fries. As I said, Hoffman fries. If you look on there, they're actually nicely seasoned and they have Piri Piri salt on there as well. Oh wow. They're very nice. Take another closer look. I've got the skin on there as well. A nice little kick there. Actually, I don't know if that's paprika actually, or it's one or the other. They are really good fries. I do like Hoffman fries. Now onto the burger. So, one thing I've got to say, the fries are nice and hot. Let's see what the burger tastes like. It's pretty brioche bun there. You know, I've said before, I actually prefer just normal buns. Um, brioche buns, not a great combination with burgers as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Now, one thing I've got to say, we'll turn that around. That is an excellent burger. It's really juicy. And the amazing thing is, when it kept saying hot than hell salsa and hot than hell sauce, I was like, oh, here we go. That's going to be really overpowering. What is excellent there is it's got a nice heat, but certainly not overpowering. And if you're frightened of a bit too much heat, no, seriously, it's not. The gherkin cuts through brilliantly, real fresh gherkin. I like the lettuce. I really like the actual presentation of that lettuce as well. You've got the tomato in there as a combination. I've got to say, that is a really good burger. Really good. Forgot about the cheese. The cheese is nicely, nicely melted on top as well. Okay, I'm gonna crack on. I said it was nice and juicy. You take close up there. You can see the juices coming out. Now that's not because it's undercooked. That's because it's cooked absolutely perfectly. Good burger. Okay, I've got to say, I enjoyed that. Um, the burger itself, very, very good. Uh, it could have been a little bit larger. The, the, the patty itself could have been larger and the burger itself could have been larger. Aesthetically, it looked absolutely amazing. Really, really nice. It's a bit into it, really juicy. You know, you saw the juices coming down there. And the thing that normally you have a burger and you have the salad in there, the onion, the lettuce, the tomato, uh, and the, the uh, gherkin. Normally that's kind of like, an add-on and not important really but in this case it was really 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 fresh it's onto the fries it had a nice crunch to them this paprika that's on there is very mild and again they were nicely salted excellent portion you know that was a nice sized portion so yeah as a combination as a meal it was good it's onto the bill actually before I go into the bill a little bit about the restaurant Quite rustic, exposed brickworks in there. Uh, it's quite in sort of a modern, trendy kind of place, but the music is very loud. If you don't like loud music, sit outside. No doubts about that. The Hell's Kitchen burger was £18. Uh, now, you've got to bear in mind that came with the fries as well. My Diet Coke was £3.95, so a total of £21.95. Now, interestingly, on the menu it says uh, there is a 15% service charge, but it wasn't a service charge on this, so the total was 21.95. Saying that, 
The chap took our order, placed the, put the plate down. I haven't seen him since, so if then it's, I think it would have been a bit cheeky putting a 15% service charge on. I think it's a bit cheeky putting a 15% service charge on, full stop. But I'll come back to that one later. What marks am I going to give it? The last burger I had was at James May's place, and I gave that an 8 out of 10. Now, I've got to say, I think that was just a little bit better than this one. Just a little bit better. I'm going to give it 7.5 out of 10. And that is very respectable, 7.5 out of 10. Would I come here again? Without a shadow of a doubt, I'd give it another go. No, so, yeah, I highly recommend it. Street burger, it's not a bad burger place. Now, I'm gonna finish my Coke, and then on for a bit of dinner. I'll see you guys soon. Okay, so for the final meal of the day, I'm gonna go to Gordon Ramsay's Bread Street Kitchen. Third meal, whew. As always, for the third time, let's give it a go. Just eat. Okay, so we've come inside. Very industrial feel here. Um, you sort of see pipe work everywhere and there's no carpet or anything on the flooring. And again, if you look at the, around the bar area, just industrial stools. Has got a real nice feel to it though, and the music's fantastic in the background. Take a look at the menu here. You've got snacks and sharers, salads, uh, mains, sushi. Uh, you can have beef wellington for two for 110 pounds, uh, if you really fancy that. Uh, me, I'm going for a lamb Rogan Josh, which is 20 pound. Now I'm gonna have that with saffron rice, which is another three pound 50 on top. Now, if I go into a normal Indian restaurant or a very good quality Indian restaurant, I wouldn't be looking to pay £20. But what I am interested in seeing is, again, how well was the lamb cooked, how dense and flavoursome is the sauce as well. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. It is a very nice, quite trendy restaurant, to say the least. Okay, one of the things I didn't mention is they've actually got an open plan kitchen. Um, the only thing is, you'd have to be about 20 foot tall to actually look into the kitchen because it is up so high. The other thing I found really quite funny, when we came in, uh, have you booked, sir? As if I might have a problem getting the seat. Take a look around in a minute. <laughs> it is very, very quiet in here. But again, I just found that a little bit strange. Have you booked? As if uh, I'm not sure I can let you in. Okay, I'll see you when the meal arrives. Okay, so my meal's arrived. Got the lamb rogan josh there, my rice there. Now, first impressions. It is not the biggest portion I've ever seen, and I'm gonna show you that in a second. Um, yeah, and the other thing is, no serving spoons. Am I being a little bit picky because of no serving spoons? Not sure. Okay, let's put it on the plate, just so you can see portion-wise here. Now that, you can see, empty bowl, is a whole portion of the rice. So, now for the lamb rogan josh. Again, nothing left there. So, yeah, just first impressions, it's not the biggest portion, to say the very least. And just counting pieces of the lamb here, one, two, three, four, five, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, of which sort of five of them are very, very small pieces. But it's all about the taste as well, isn't it? Okay, let's tuck in. I don't think it's going to take very long. I'm going to try the lamb, first of all. Look at them. Nice, nice colour to the sauce. The lamb's got a nice flavour to it. It's very melts in your mouth. There's no issue with the lamb. The only problem I have is the sauce. The sauce is very bland. There's very little spice there. In fact, there's no spice there. It's just got a kind of tomato taste to it. If you look at it there, it's not the thickest sauce in the world. 
Yeah, it is actually very, very bland. Now, let's try the rice here. So I've got the rice. I'll try the rice with a bit of sauce. It might could be cooked that tiny bit more. It's a little bit hard in places. Yeah, I normally say rice is rice, and it is a little bit disappointing, to say the least. It has got some sultanas in there, just to add some flavour to it. But again, I can't really taste any, any real saffron coming through. I'm going to tuck in here, and I'll see you guys shortly. Portion size-wise, very shortly. Okay, I'm just having a couple of pieces of the lamb here. And this one, you see, that's very tough. These aren't. They just pull apart nicely. Let's try this piece. Yeah, it's just very strange. Different pieces of the lamb there. Um, some a little bit tough and others just melt in your mouth. So that's a little bit strange, but what is so disappointing is this sauce. Actually, it's, there's no flavor to it. And if you didn't know better, I'd, I'd say it came out of a tin, but I wouldn't have said that would happen here or a jar or whatever. But um, it generally, it generally is almost tasteless. There's no spiciness coming through. It's all about the taste, but there's no, there's no real flavour. Yeah, disappointed. Okay, so I've got the bill here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside and give my final thoughts on what I think of my day at Gordon Ramsay restaurants. What I can say is the lady to my right hand side ordered the beef wellington and that looks absolutely incredible. I wish I had the beef wellington. Okay, so I've come outside. Um, I didn't actually want to do the review inside, which is a little bit unusual for me because I tend to not mind. Okay, so quite a few people are going to turn around and say, why did you go to Gordon Ramsay's restaurant and choose uh, curry? Because in fairness, it's not an Indian restaurant. However, he's got three curries on that menu out of an, out of an option of 11 mains. So he's putting his name to the curry situation, if you like. So what he's saying is, I can do a curry. Old Van took, took off there at a bit of speed. Now, what do I think of the meal itself? Some pieces of the lamb there were nice and tender. Other pieces there were a little bit on the tough side. And I'm, I'm struggling to understand how the, there could be such a big difference. The other thing is there were seven pieces of lamb there, of which five pieces were very, very small. Talking of small, did you see that portion of saffron rice? That was incredibly small and didn't taste the saffron at all. Speaking of not having much taste, the lamb Rogan Josh sauce borderline tasteless. And if I didn't know better, I'd say that, that came out of a jar. I genuinely would. I mean, it was, well, it was shocking. There was no other word for it. It was tasteless. There was no, no spice to it. There was, there was no kind of flavor to it at all. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's up there as one of the worst curries I've ever had or curry sauces I've ever had. Really disappointed. Okay, so onto the bill. Uh, for my lamb Rogan Josh and the saffron rice, it came to 23 pound 50. Um, I had a bottle of still water, a large bottle of still water, which was six pound. Um, and it has a service charge on there of 15%. Grand total of 33 pound 93. 33.93. What marks I'm gonna give it? I did like the restaurant. I did have a good feel in the restaurant and the service was excellent. I don't know about 15% excellent, but it was excellent. I'm gonna give it two and a half out of ten a two and a half out of ten okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to collect my thoughts i'm going to go somewhere else i'm going to tell you what i thought of my day at mr gordon ramsay's restaurants okay so ends my day eating at mr gordon ramsay's restaurants hold on a second gordon gary gary gordon meet the audience i did not put the mustache on by the way so yeah that wasn't me the food now, breakfast, that was a nice treat. Really enjoyed my breakfast. Nice and relaxed atmosphere. Not gonna go through it all, but that is an excellent treat. Gave that a nine out of 10. That was well deserved. For my burger at lunchtime, nice burger. Wasn't the best burger I've ever had, wasn't the worst. It was a nice, reasonable burger. And dinner. Gordon, would you be happy with that? Most contentious bit of today was the service charge. Now, in Venice, lunchtime, they forgot to put the 15% on saying that there wasn't much service there, but 15%, I think that's really bad. Now, a lot of restaurants charge 10, 12 and a half, and this is probably the highest I've, I've been charged, 15%. So 
So what marks I'm going to give for my day? Fantastic breakfast, really nice uh, lunchtime. Shocking dinner. Overall, I'm going to give it six and a half, seven. I'm going to give it a six and a half out of ten. As I said earlier, I'd love to hear your comments. What do you think of my day at Mr. Ramsey's? Until next time, bye-bye. You buy me a drink? Come on then. <laughs>